So this is a little explanation of um, some working with baking beans and how J, uh, J Developer does it. So we're going to create a new JSF page. Now one option you have in JSF pages when you create it is to automatically expose UI components in your manage bin. In this case, the baking and title 6 bin. Um, when you do this, what happens is that JDeveloper goes off and each object that you create on your page will actually be exposed as an object in a backing bin, um, which makes it very easy for you to access all of those components. Um, now, what I should stress here is that this is actually not a recommended way of doing this, right? And I'll show you why in a second. So, I'll just show you, we can drag and drop, let's say, a couple of links into my page can drag a button, and um, we can drag an input text, for example, and a bunch of other stuff, right? And then we can start con um, like surrounding items uh, in my page, like that, and say surround with, for example, um, and add a panel box, for example, like that. Right, and as you build your page this way, your backing bin is being generated for you. So if you actually go to your ADF config file, right, um, you can see it in the overview tab, and you go to the manage bins, you'll see here's your backing bin that was defined for you. And an easy way to navigate to it is you switch to the source and you just click the class, control, click the class, and you get to the class. And in here you'll see all the objects on your page. So you'll see the command links, the button, the text, and even the box is exposed here. And that's actually the problem. The problem is that every component on your page is being exposed um, in your backing bin, um, which might cause a little bit of a memory issue um, if you have a lot of components on your page and you're just exposing them without actually using them. What you should be doing is exposing only the components that you need. So we'll get to this in a second. Um, one more thing I wanted to show here is the ability, basically, to go to any component. Right? You have the core ID that it was given, and even if you're doing automatic binding, you can change it. Uh, for example, you can call this one the My button. Okay, and if you change the ID here, the change is actually going to be reflected in your code as well. Right? So we're actually doing the factoring across your backing bins from the visual editor. Um, by the way, um, if you created a page and you didn't specify to do auto binding, you can actually control it. When you're wo working in the visual editor, you can go into the design menu, page properties, and component binding. You can turn on and off the auto binding here, right, and specify to which bin to bind it. Anyway, so that was what we regard as the wrong way of doing this. Um, because it basically saves information about a lot of components that you're not actually using in a backing bin that is being initialized when you run the page. So a better way of doing it is to actually create your pages, and that's the default now. Uh, when you create your page, by default, this would be turned off, right? Unless you turn it on for one page and then it's turned off and turned on until you turn it off again. So we're going to do a do not expose components. So you just start by designing your page, and you can start putting input text on it, for example. And then you can take some, um, let's say, links and add them to your page, like that. And maybe some buttons. And you just design your page as you go. Now comes the part where you actually need to add some logic to the components. right? So it's very easy to just say, behind this button, I need to have some logic, or behind this link. All you need to do is just double click on it, like that, and JDeveloper would open a little um, dialog that allows you to create a new method binding for this component. Right? Another way, by the way, to get the same dialog right, is to go into, for example, the action listener for this link, right? click here and say edit. And again, what you're prompted with is the opportunity to either put the code in an existing backing bin or manage bin, or create a new one, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a backing for one title seven page. Right. Um, can specify where to create my backing bin right. and what scope to give it, for example. 
then I can click OK. Then I can specify a, a, an existing method or a new method to handle the a link click. So we'll call it link click event, for example. And click OK. So now we have the backing bin right here. Let's drag it down here so we can actually see both pages at the same time. And here's the place where I can write my logic. Now maybe in my logic I actually need to reference one of the objects on my page, for example, this text item. Now currently I don't have reference for it in my backing bin, but it's very easy to do it. All you need to do is click the item and look up the property called binding. Right here. And just click edit and say I need a reference to this item in my backing bin I entitled for and we'll call this one um, my text. And once you do this, you actually get the my text item to be inside your backing bin. Like that. And then in your code, you can start writing things like this and get my text. That's the right way of exposing just the components you need in your backing bin, making your code cleaner without a lot of components that you don't use, and making less of a memory footprint on your